There are some changes, of course, that I'd like to show you about. Take this remote control because this is only the main screen of the Bogart SE. But there's an underlying, I see we even have a screensaver now, isn't that something? Uh, so there is an underlying uh, thing that we call, that's a actually this thing that we derive from our entertainment center, the so-called enterprise, that's in Europe now also sold under the Harman Kardon brand. Um, now what it, what it is is that really if you start the system, you boot into this menu. And this menu is pretty new because it gives you a lot of choices that we never had under the Casablanca. So the first line, that is things that we think that you should do in live television. These two are probably not so relevant for the US because um, we would need different TV tuners for that. That's television and radio. But there's internet. Yes, there is now an integrated internet browser. So you can use your unit and browse the web, provided that you have an internet access somewhere. And then the next line here is playback. We can play back DVDs. Yes, even commercially produced, copy protected DVDs can now be played back with the system. Um, you have USB devices, so you can import and play back stuff from USB, DivX files, MPEG files, MP3 files, all this. And we even have a symbol for playing back stuff that is coming from an Ethernet network. That could also be Wi Fi and it could also be a power line adapter. It depends on, on what you have. Since this is running under Linux, we, uh, this whole network um, is completely open to us. We have archives. These are video archives and audio archives and photo archives. These are archives that you can write into and you can read from, from um, Bogart SE. So instead of burning a DVD from your video project, you can say, please also store a copy of this in my video archives. And then it will save it on your hard drive in a format that you can later on play back. But you can also use it from here to play it back, or you can use it from here to slap it on a USB, USB stick for a customer, or on a USB hard drive, or you can burn a disk with it on it. Same thing is for the audio. You can rip CDs directly into it. Now, this is open for you in audio editing. You don't have to read it into your project. You can go back to your archives all the time. So uh, you can really, with these large hard drives that we're having, there is no reason why you should always reread all your audio and video files into it. Now you have a centralized archive that you can access from all your applications. Same thing is for the photos. We have a large photo archive, and we would save the photos in their original resolution, so we won't downscale them. You can downscale them in your project if they need to fit the video resolution. But maybe you want to give it out to someone in the full resolutions for further processing it on a PC. Therefore, here in the archives, we always store the stuff in the original resolution. Now we have uh, timer functionality and so on. This is uh, really much of a television system that we currently cannot supply into, uh, supply into North America. But we probably will be able to do that soon because the FCC has ruled that the cable networks and satellite networks have to open up towards products like us. Um, they have to give you cards, they call this a cable card sometimes, so that you don't have to use the set-top box that they give you, but you can use a one that's far more sophisticated, like ours, that can allow you to do time shift and recordings of up to 10 channels in parallel fashion. So something that the set-top boxes usually can't do. Then we have a few settings, and we also have Smart Edit. This is the symbol for Smart Edit. So now the Bogart SE, or Bogart Smart Edit, is really only one of the applications that you start from here. So if I start into the Bogart, then it will simply launch the Bogart application, and then I can continue my video editing. And can go back if I want to. OK. Now, this is now also a full playback device. And I can play back from USB sources and so on. Let me see if I can find my USB sticks. There they are. So, connected to it. OK, now, let's say you want to give the customer not only a video DVD with your production, but he happens to have an iPod Touch or an iPhone or anything that can play back files. And you also want to give him the stuff in this format. Then in the video archives, I have something that I've recorded from German television. It's going to look a little stuttering on here, since this is a 60 hertz display and it would look very smooth on a 50 hertz display. So if I want to take this 
and put it onto a, uh, onto a memory stick. There is a button DVD that exports and creates a DVD, but it also exports. Now when pressing the media destination, I can now choose, is this going to be USB or CD, DVD, dual layer DVD, Blu-ray or dual, la dual layer Blu-ray? So go for USB. And then in options, what I can do is I can simply select what I want to have. We have several manufacturers of devices, over 700 of them, um, that manufacture devices that can play back video files. So let's say I have a Motorola cell phone, and then I can simply select the model that I'm having. They have quite a few. <laughs> so, <laughs> Okay, and then I simply select it, and the system will automatically be optimized for rendering the right output a video and audio format for you. So, and then if I've done this, I can simply go ahead and ask the system to create the video for me, and it now will export it to my USB stick. That could also be your cell phone. Most cell phones now come with a USB cable. So you could directly copy this to a uh, memory card that you, you, you're using inside your cell phone. And once I'm finished with it, and you see it's not even a slow procedure, then I can also play it back using this system. You don't have to play it back on your cell phone. Although this is somewhat a lower resolution, it's been it's, it's now been optimized to match the resolution of the display in that cell phone. So the cell phone doesn't have to scale. This g gets you the best possible image quality. See, now I'm finished with this. And I can also import all these files. So if I go to my main menu and then to the USB part of it, it's now reading all the files on my little USB stick. And you see this is the RD Buffy show that I've just recorded. Now it will play back in a somewhat reduced resolution. It's hard to tell here. But it is lower resolution. And it's now been designed to play back in a cell phone. Um, these are a, some audio clips that I've recorded on them in MP3 format. OK. Modern Girl, maybe I want to import that. So you can import. See, there is a little thing that is of a press record button. It will import. So I select the modern girl for, ex for importing and import it. Now it's reading it from the memory stick into my archive. See, here is my audio archive. If I go inside, then you see this is my modern girl MP3 file. It's now a part of my, of my music archive. And you could do the same with the network. You could pull files from it, save files to it. and. Now, see, this is my collection of uh, audio files, and these are actually CDs, like the Bob Dylan's Greatest Hits, that I can play. Okay. You can skip to the next file. Okay. can just do a little forward in here. And, uh, but if I also want to, want to export this, I simply click DVD. And then I decide, what do I want to save it to my USB stick, or do I want to save it to a CD? But then I can also say in opts, I want to create a normal audio CD. And then I can just keep adding files and then burn an audio CD out of it. So all these archives are in and out, so and you can cross-convert into anything. You can rip a CD and save it as MP3, but you can also rip a CD and save it in original CD format. Okay. So you see that there is lots of inputs and outputs formats. Same is for the photos. So I have some photos on here that I can play back. And these photos are all saved in high definition. So if I go through them, those are beautiful photos. It's just look better from on this one than on this one. But still, you can go ahead and also export them. So you have the same function to export them. You have the same choices. On what device do you want to save it? If I want to save this here on my USB stick, this is very easy. So just saved it on the USB stick, the photo. So you got all the ins and outs that you really want.